Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the River Church at the main event. I'm so excited for us to worship the Lord and praise Him. He is so good. He's been so good to us this week. Can I get a yes and amen? amen. Hallelujah. So we're here to worship. If you want, just go ahead and stand to your feet. We're just going to worship Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. Have your way in us even as we praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness, you have filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, you're my help in time of need. Lord, I can't help but sing. Faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are. And all your promises are yes and amen. And all your promises are yes and amen. Oh, beautiful Savior, you have brought me near. You pulled me from the ashes, you have broken every curse. Blessed Redeemer, you have set this captive free. Lord, I can't help but see. Says I uh, yes and amen. You are faithful, faithful you are, faithful forever you will be, faithful you are, and all your promises are uh, yes and amen. All oh, your promises are uh, yes and amen. Says I yes and amen. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. Faithful you are. Yes, amen. And all your promises, yes, amen. And all your promises, yes, amen. Oh, all your promises, yes, amen. Let's go back to verse one real quick. Just be that in my heart. Just to praise the Father. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness, you have filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, you're my help in time of need. Lord, I can't help but sing. Faithful and forever you will be faithful, you are, and all your promises are yes and amen. Oh, all your promises are yes and amen. Oh, all your promises are yes and amen. Says I yes and amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, 
Yes and amen, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, you're so good. Waymaker, 
who you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, all right. I'm not going. All right. Hallelujah. 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 How many came here today expecting? Lift your hands up to heaven. I am expecting. Just shout that out. I am expecting, Lord. How many came hungry and thirsty? My God says, you shall be filled. I'm expecting. I come expecting Jesus because you are so good. Hallelujah. We just worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. You're so good. Hallelujah. You dance so.
my cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for now my life is yours and I will sing of your goodness forevermore worthy is your name Jesus you deserve praise and worthy is your name worthy is your name Jesus you deserve the praise worthy is your name and now my shame is gone I stand amazed in your love undeniable and your grace goes on and on and I will sing of your goodness forevermore worthy is your name Jesus you deserve the praise
For a thousand tongues to sing your praise. Jesus, all of heaven worships you. All the angels shout your praise. And we won't let the rocks cry out. We won't let the rocks cry out. Worthy is your name. 
We sing worthy is the name above every name, Jesus. We shout your name, Jesus. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Just take a moment in your own words. Just worship him. Just worship him. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, that's it. Just lift up your voice to heaven. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Come on, in one accord, in one place. Oh, Oh, we worship you. We magnify you, Jesus. Oh, there's none like you, Lord. The honey in the rock, the lily in the valley, the rose of Sharon, the bright morning star, Jesus. We magnify Jesus in this place. You said if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. We lift up Jesus. We lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. In one accord, in one place, in spirit and in truth this morning, Father, we lift up your wonderful name. Glorify your name in all this region, Father. Oh, we magnify you. We thank you. We glorify you. Lord, we don't have words in English to even begin to describe your grace, your glory, your goodness, your favor. Hallelujah. So, Father, today as we come together in one accord, in one place, I thank you, Lord, that you would move among us. Lord, thank you for the wind of heaven blowing in this place. Thank you, Father, for the fire of the Holy Ghost falling upon your people. Lord, let that river flow through this place, a river of joy, a river, a river of life, a river of healing. Father, move among us even today, and let us not leave the same way. Let us leave changed, transformed. Lord, let people even today encounter your glory, encounter your presence. Let them have encounters of the God kind. And Father, we just thank you. Holy Spirit, come do whatever you want to do. We're not going to stop or hinder you. In, fa in fact, Father, we just thank you right now for the blood of Jesus that just cleanses this place right now. In Jesus' name, from every lie of the enemy, hallelujah, every curse, any fear, any anxiety, any even unbelief, we, we just take it captive. And Father, we put our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Today, we know nothing is impossible with you. Today, our eyes are on Jesus. Today, our eyes are on the word. And today, we've come to receive all that heaven has for our life. And so, Father, we engage you today. And we promise to give the praise, the glory, and the honor to whom it is due, the wonderful name of Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. Well, isn't the Lord good? Hallelujah. I want you to go out of your way and greet somebody. Tell them you love them. Tell them Jesus loves them. Hallelujah. I want to greet everybody watching online. God bless you. Go ahead and share the broadcast if you can. Amen. Share it, put it in groups. Hallelujah. Someone needs to hear this this morning. Hallelujah.
Praise God. <laughs> well, say, I don't know about you. I feel the joy of the Lord. What about you, Sam? Amen. Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> say, say this with me. Say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah, say that again. Say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> Let's say that all together. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, let's rejoice then. Yeah. <laughs> amen. We have something to rejoice about. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And I, I like what David said. He said, it's the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Right? It's a decision. We got to get our will involved. Right? Some people aren't willing, but you need to be willing. Amen. It's the day he's made. My Bible tells me his mercies are new every morning. So when I wake up in the morning, there are brand new, never before seen, specially designed mercies with my name on it. And so I'm going to take it and I'm going to rejoice in it and I'm going to be glad in it. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Amen. And so we have something to rejoice in, in about. And every day when you wake up, not just Sunday, hello. It's easy on Sunday because you get around all these wonderful people. Amen. But on Monday, Tuesday, through the week, you got to make a decision that I'm going to rejoice in today. And here's why. You ready for this? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And if the enemy takes your joy, what does he take? Your strength. Are you with me? And so I don't know about you. I'm not going to let the enemy take my strength. I'm not going to let him take my joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah. Who, who can tell? I woke up on the right side of the bed. <laughs> I really did, man. I woke up like this. I woke up just happy to have Jesus in my heart. I did, man. <clears throat> I woke up and I thought, yeah, it's a good day to have revival, man. Amen. I, thank you, Lord, for the joy of my salvation. Amen. Because sometimes Christians can get so... Uh, this is, I don't know, like they complicated, right? They complicate things so much. But can we just like be happy that we're saved? Can we just be happy we're going to heaven? Amen. Come on. A hundred years from now, we're all going to be there anyway. Hallelujah. Think about that. You talk about a good thing. And what's the Lord going to say? Enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen. So you might as well get used to this joy because it's going to be eternal joy. Amen. The Bible says that there is joy in the presence of God before the angels over one sinner who comes to repentance. So think about that. Yesterday, I, I heard the soul winner saw, what, like 50 some? 54 decisions for Jesus at the fair. Yeah, I think we can break four or five hundred. Amen. I, I think we, I believe we can this, this, uh, this, <laughs> this week. But, you know, so what does that tell me? Heaven is a place of constant rejoicing. The angels are rejoicing. So if you have loved ones on the other side right now, they're having a party. Amen. This is why I miss them. Well, it's not going to be that long. You're going to be with them too because we all have to die. You know what I mean? And a uh, hundred years from now, we'll all be there. Hello. Amen. And it's going to be epic. So don't let these, <laughs> yeah, temporary things get you down right? Things that in a hundred years will not matter what this person said. This person unfriended me on Twitter, you know, or Facebook. Oh my gosh, it ruins people's day over nothing. Over really nothing. 
who knows what I'm talking about, that in 100 years it won't amount to a hill of beans. I pray if you get anything from this ministry, this church, I pray the Lord downloads a sense of eternity in your heart. Amen. Of what really is mattering, going to matter. Jesus said, store up treasure in heaven. Come on, who's doing that? Who's putting treasure in heaven? Who knows you have a heavenly bank account? You do. You have a heavenly bank account, and you can store treasure in heaven. Are you with me? Hallelujah. As we win souls, and we serve God to the best of our ability. Amen. And we, we obey him and do what he tells us to do. Come on. Don't get me talking about this now, because I'll go on. I'll take the whole service. Amen. Come on. Who knows? We're all going to stand before the Lord and give an account for our life. And there's something that we call the Bema Seat Judgment. We call it that because Roman athletes, they'd give them rewards after they would, uh, you know, compete for, for prizes. And, and it would be the Bema uh, Seat. They would give them rewards, right? And so we call it the Bema Seat. After the rapture happens, we're all going to go up and all stand before the Lord. And we're going to have the Bema Seat Judgment where Jesus is going to come and reward you on what you did with your time, your talents, your treasures, and your tongue. Amen? And you can go read about it in Corinthians. It's all laid out that our, our life will be tried by fire. So this is, you know, basically, we're going to take our, our life and put it on the altar. The fire of God's going to come down. Our life will be representative as, as wood, hay, and stubble, or gold, jewels, and precious stones. And the fire of God will come down and burn out the wood, the hay, the stubble. The wood, the hay, the stubble is what? How we lived our life for ourselves, selfish things, fleeting pleasures, worldly. You know what I mean? Even stuff that wasn't necessarily sin, but it, it, it was nothing that was eternal. You know what I mean? And that'll be the wood, the hay, the stubble. The gold, the jewels, the precious stones, that's the souls we won. That's the, the obedience, uh, that, you know, the, the offerings we gave as we were obedient and anything the Lord told us to do. Hello. And when all that wood, hay, and stubbles burn up, then we're going to have the gold, the jewels, the precious stones, and then we're going to receive these rewards. And then, you know, crowns are going to be given. Come on, who knows that there's crowns? There's a soul winner's crown. I want you to get that one. Amen. And he's going to give us crowns. Now, someone says, well, why, why, you know, do we want to have all of that? Because, the, look, the first thing you're going to do in heaven is give an offering. Do you hear me? You, just when you thought the river services were over, where we don't talk about giving anymore, the first thing you're going to do is cast your crowns at his feet. Who wants to give Jesus a big offering? You talk about an offering that I get to give him face to face. That came from my life right? Yeah, you know what? So someone says, well, what drives you? And I'll tell you this. I'm not driven. I'm led. But what, what motivates me? That. I, I think about that. Every single day, I think about the offering <laughs> that I'm going to give Jesus, the crowns that I'm going to get the cast at his feet, right? Come on. So, you know, who wants to do that? All right, well, come on, get on board. Amen. <laughs> Come out with us on Saturday, soul winning, right? Get it, get plugged in in every, this is why I tell people, and then we'll, we'll, we'll amen, <laughs> go to the announcements here. But <clears throat> this is what I tell people because it's not like you have to go, you know, be a preacher, you know, because my goodness, you, <laughs> not everyone needs to be a preacher, <laughs> you, you know. God calls people to every area of society who understands that. There's an anointing to go into the political realm. In fact, if you go into the political realm, you need to have as strong as, of an anointing as somebody in the ministry to face what is going on in that realm, right? And so there's a whole anointing you need just for the political realm. Uh, how many of you guys know there's an anointing for business? You'll remember the Lord your God. He gives you power to create wealth. Who knows people that it's like everything their hands touch just income, man. I mean, it's just just their influence. Suddenly, finances flow from the north, the south, the east. What is that? That's an anointing to actually create wealth, right? And and so, you know, I know of one woman in history. Uh, I think it was 17, 1800. She desperately wanted to be in the ministry in some way. She wanted to devote her life to the church and to serving the Lord. And the Lord actually told her no. <laughs> so I said, what? Yeah, he, the Lord said no. And, and she got a word from heaven. She said, he said, you'll raise three sons, and each one of them will be a preacher. And she raised three sons, and she even taught them Greek and Hebrew. I mean, she gave it her all, man. And those three preachers, I mean, they had nation-shaking ministries, right? 
So guess what? The, the reward that they get for their ministry, because they want all these souls and planted churches and denominations, it was like epic. Well, she's going to get that reward because her obedience contributed into that. Hello. So someone says, what's the key? Take what you're doing and attach it to eternity and just get involved in some way. Amen. If it's business, well, okay, I'm a kingdom business. I'm funding the gospel. If it's a, to be a politician, hello, which God help you. Amen. <laughs> you know, if you're going to be a lawyer, then guess what? You should be the most honest, anointed lawyer. Hello, not a crook. Amen. If you're going to be, you know, who was Luke? He was a physician. How many of you guys know the person who wrote the book of Acts was a physician? He was a doctor. Be the most anointed doctor. Are you with me? Okay, are you getting this? Some of you don't look too sure. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, isn't the Lord good? Okay. So it says, why are you talking about this? Well, because it, I was reminded that I'm going to be held account for you. Are you with me? So how many of you guys know the Lord's going to hold me responsible? And if you don't have your crowns, he's going to come to me and say, hey, this person didn't have their crown. What, what's that all about? Who knows? I'm going to go through a double judgment. <laughs> so in this church, we kind of demand that you produce fruit. We do. We demand. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to not get a spanking from the Lord. You know. Glory to God. Well, isn't the Lord good? Uh, hey, I want to encourage you before Jamie comes up to give you the announcements here. I want to encourage you to come out on Saturdays. Haven't Saturdays been great? It, they've been off the chain. We've had another group coming from another church, and they've just they've been getting blessed and getting into it. And uh, you know, maybe you know somebody uh, that needs the teaching on healing. Right? It's one hour from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And this is not something when we're trying to get people from other churches to start coming here. I don't want that. But we do want to be a place where people can come and receive teaching about healing. Are you with me? And so that's what it's all about. You know, we don't get people here and say, by the way, come to the river. We're not doing that. You know, this is genuinely because I feel led of the Lord that there are people who need healed in their body. And, and it's right there. They just need pushed in the right direction. You know what I mean? And so every Saturday from 1 to 2, we're doing one hour uh, teaching on healing. And so don't miss this. If you can come, you need to come. So I said, well, I don't need healed right now. Well, I mean, do you think the enemy is ever going to try to attack you in that way? If yes, you should come get loaded up. Amen. So if he does, you're ready to go at that thing in the word. And so we've been having a great time on Saturdays. It's just one hour. And uh, last, oh, it was yesterday. Wow, that feels like several days ago. Yesterday, I began talking about how to receive healing, right? Because there's several ways in the Bible that we can actually receive healing in our physical bodies. And one of the ways that I talked about yesterday was, is by the gifts of the Spirit. Who knows we have nine gifts of the Spirit? Hey, yeah, they're pretty sweet. And so we talked about the gifts of the Holy Ghost and how those manifest. But then we're going to go on from there to talk about other ways. Because you don't want to just wait around on a manifestation of the gift of healing. You know what I mean? I mean, what if... What if you have a week to live and the pastor's like not feeling very juicy that day? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, he didn't get much sleep and he didn't pray. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just, it is what it is, you know, and, you know, he's not yielding. And so then what, what, what's going on with you, you know? So there's other ways, you know, the prayer of faith will save the sick, right? So we're going to talk about the prayer of faith, the laying on of hands. The Bible says believers will lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. We're going to talk about how to lay hands on people, right? How to pray for healing. Um, you know, there, there's many other ways through, uh, actually I started on it yesterday after I talked about the gifts. Did you know one of the ways you can receive healing is through the joy of the Lord? We had like a little bit of it at the beginning. Amen. I would have liked to see more. Amen. But did you know that the Bible says a merry heart doeth good like medicine? Yeah. So even, or who knows who Oral Roberts is? He was like, yeah, uh, God used him greatly in, in healing, right? Well, he, I, I read one of his books. He said the greatest way, in his opinion, to, to walk in divine health is to have the joy of the Lord because the joy is your strength, right? And so the enemy always comes with depression and stress, right? And even in the world, they've proven stress and depression can make all kinds of crazy stuff go on in your body. When my mother, before she was set free from depression, she was suicidal and depressed, um, you know, like last week. No, I was like... like <laughs> 
years ago, okay? And I was just a kid. I was, I was like 13. And uh, uh, she was walking around trying to think, how can I kill myself and still go to heaven? <laughs> you know, it was, it was, it was you know, she, she was, you, you can be sick in your head like you're sick in your body. You know what I mean? And she was. It was affecting her. And so uh, anyway, the Lord totally set her free. Well, she went to the, the doctor because she thought she was dying. She had every sort of symptom, chest pain, uh, you know, palpitations, uh, you know. I mean, just it was going all over her body, you know, just couldn't get out of bed in the morning, pain all over, muscle soreness. She thought she was dying, you know, and the whole thing, the doctor diagnosed her with depression, you know, and gave her Prozac. And so she took that one time and she said, I can't even function on this stuff. And so she went back to the doctor. She said, I can't take this stuff. I can't even function. He said, okay, well, there's another way. He was a Baptist. And you know what he did? He gave her 10 scriptures. And he said, I want you to meditate on this every single day. And she did. And she got totally free. Thank God for Baptist doctors. Amen. I mean, that, that blesses me, you know. And, and she got completely set free. So stress and depression, I mean, even medical science has proved that that can cause all kinds of stuff in your body. You know, real stuff. People have died from a broken heart, right? Uh, you know, hope deferred makes the heart sick, right? Uh, out of the abundance of the heart. Okay, I would that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. So you're going to be in health as your soul, as your mind, your will, your emotions are, you know. So um, make Saturday if you can because we're going to talk about all that and how to fix that stuff. You know, someone after the service gave me a wonderful testimony of how he was set free from violent anger outbursts, you know, and he didn't understand it, and he was just violent. And uh, he said one day he went out to the field, and he just started to cry out to God. He's like, why am I like this? <laughs> you know, I, I say that to my cat sometimes. Why are you like that? You know, but anyway, he said, why am I like this? You know, and he began to quote scripture, and, and he said the Lord spoke to him and revealed to him something that he had buried, which men usually are good at doing this, something that happened to him as a kid that, you know, he, he was abused as a kid. And the Lord said, that's it right there. You've never forgave the person who abused you. And he did. The Lord helped him. How many of you guys know sometimes you, could, you just got to forgive by faith? You know, it can be hard, you know. And he did. And the Lord totally delivered him. Happiest man I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I never met him before. I was walking in on Saturday. He smiled at me all the way in. You know, I'm like, who is this happy man, you know? Looks like he has never had a bad day in his life, but he's delivered, right? And so these are real things. And how many of you guys know that when we say he goes where the knife of man can never go, we're talking about those hidden things that only Jesus can touch. Because here's the thing. He's a gentleman. He'll touch all around that thing in your heart, but he won't touch that thing until you give him the access to do it, right? So I don't know about you, but this is what I do. I just ask the Lord, go touch every area of my heart. There's nothing off limits, Lord. Come do whatever you want to do, and I'm not going to stop you. Are you with me? Because sometimes in revival meetings, which we're about to have those here in a week or so, sometimes in revival meetings, the Lord will begin to deal with people, and they leave the room because the Lord begins to touch areas that they don't want to deal with. Are you with me? So let's deal with it and come up higher, amen? Let's get healed, let's be whole, let's be set free, let's be delivered. And come on, if you're going to live on this earth, you might as well live free. He who the sun sets free is what? Free indeed, amen? Okay, I'm too happy. You better get up here, Jamie. and <laughs> get, Give Jamie a, a God bless you. He's coming up to give the announcements. Good morning, River Church. Oh, you guys look great today. Look great today. All righty. No pictures. We have designated people who do that. So uh, put your phone cameras away and let the people who are assigned to do that do that. Um, if we have a text, Join River. It's all one word. Text 77222 to get the updates when we have events like the Healing School, Soul Winning, um, you know, or Wednesday nights, Blood Covenant, um, anything. Anything that's happening at church, you get a text. Get involved. We have a lot of opportunities to help do something. Do something. You know, I don't know what to do. Well, get with Pastor Zach, Pastor Edie. 
you know, we'll plug you in somewhere. We'll plug you in somewhere. Um, if you want to join us for our trip to Israel in April, you need to talk to Miss Linda. I know she's excited about that, and that'll be that'll be awesome. That'll be awesome. Like Pastor Zach said, we have uh, Vincent Skinner coming October 11th through the 15th, 7 p.m., correct? Yep, 7 p.m., Tuesday through Sunday. Don't don't miss these meetings. Like, do not miss them. Last year, like, the meeting was epic for me. I mean, he prophesied over me and my wife, and it was just it's phenomenal. You never know. You never know what God's going to do in these meetings. He makes himself real to you. Um, shoot. Join us during the week. Uh, let's see. Pastor Zach's on the radio, 830 in the mornings. Uh, last three weeks have been epic. They've been, been good, been really good. I don't know if you listened, but I did. I'm laying in my bed there listening and then I get up and get ready for church. <laughs> Mondays from 11 to 12, we have prayer in, in here. Uh, powerful prayer. Pray over the city, pray over the country, pray over our church needs, church people. It's great. So make it if you can. Wednesdays, wow. Huh. Wednesday nights, if you have not been here on Wednesday nights, pastor's teaching on the blood covenants. That is an eye opener. It has been epic. Um, we still have what? Two, uh, we won't do next week. We got one more. Just come. That's all right. Hey, come next Wednesday. Or not next Wednesday, the following one. Oh, this Wednesday. Yes, this Wednesday. Don't go to the fair. Come to the blood covenant. Yeah, come to church. Uh, like Pastor Zach said, healing school on Saturday, 1 p.m., if you need a healing in your body or want to learn how to minister healing, come. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then right after that, 2 o'clock, we have soul winning. 54 decisions for Christ yesterday at the fair. Kashak the County Fair. We have 54 of them. That's awesome. That's awesome. So we are now at, we're well over 3,000 souls so far. <laughs> Wow. That was our goal for the year, right? And we're starting October 1st at over 3,000. So you know what that tells me? We can get to four. We can get to four. We can do it. And, uh, which reminds me, like, it was weird this morning. I was thinking, and God put it on my heart. He said, okay, there's about 30 of us in here, right, today? So five souls a week. One a day. Well, not, that's even less than one a day. Five souls. So each of us get five souls a week. Right? That's 150. Right? So 300 in two weeks. 450. <laughs> I'm not a math whiz. 450. 600 a month, right? 600 a month. If each of us just tell five people. It's 1,800. There's our, there's a, there's a river 4,000. We got three months, right? We can do this, River Church. Five people. Five people. Each one of us a week. It's what it's about. We got to populate the kingdom of heaven. And uh, it's really on my heart. I've been praying, God, what, what do I... What, what do you want me to do? And he just said, win more souls. Win more souls. That's what we're all called to do. And that's what's been instilled in us at this church. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest. I've slacked here the last couple of weeks. <laughs> not no more. Not no more. So I'm not just, I'm not calling you out. I'm calling myself out here is what I'm doing. I got to speak it out. And if I'm speaking it out, then now you can hold me accountable, which I like. I like accountability. We all need somebody to hold us accountable. So I'm not going to let you down. So don't let me down. 
I love you guys. Maybe Pastor Zach, come back up here. <laughs> you know the Holy Ghost is in the room when the person doing announcements is repenting for not wanting souls. <laughs> Yeah, I know, that's awesome. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like a truth serum up here, though, isn't it? You come up here, and it's like, it's a truth serum. You get under the anointing, and it's just like everything comes out. <laughs> uh, well, hallelujah. So we're going to receive communion at the end. Amen. And uh, do, do we have that ready? We're okay. So we'll receive the offering at the end, too. Um as we usually do uh, on on the first Sunday of the month. But I have to read this passage. If you could turn to Psalm 37, and this isn't my main message, but the Lord will not leave this. Uh, uh, you know, he, he just keeps bringing this to my spirit all morning. So, look, I don't know who this is for. It could be someone online. It could be someone in the building. But someone just needs to hear this. So I'm just going to read it out. And uh, hallelujah. But it says in... Uh, Verse 1, Psalm 37, and uh, I'll read it from the Amplified Classic. It says, Fret not because of evildoers, neither be envious against those who work unrighteousness. For, in verse 2, For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust, re lean on and rely, and be confident in the Lord and do good. So you shall dwell in the land and feed surely on his faithfulness, and truly you shall be fed. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires in the secret petitions of your heart. Who knows that verse? Delight yourself in the Lord, and he gives you the desires of your heart, right? Come on, who has a testimony that that scripture is true? Amen. I mean, I remember when I was in Bible school, and I wanted a banjo out of nowhere. I just wanted a banjo. And I called mom. She's in Ohio. I said, Mom, I really want a banjo. She said, a banjo? I said, yeah, I want a banjo. I thought banjo was as easy as guitar, but I was very wrong. Amen. Well, anyway, the next week, a, a girl walks up to me from the Bible school with a banjo in her hand. And she goes, and I've I probably never had a conversation with this girl. And she walks up to me with a banjo. She said, do you want a banjo? The Lord put on my heart to give you a banjo. I thought, man, that was a secret thing, you know. Only the Lord knew I wanted that, and uh, I feel bad I never learned it. But anyway, uh, it says, commit your way to the Lord. To the Lord. Tr it, it says in the Amplified, roll in and repose each care of your load on him. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. Come on, church, say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. And he will make your uprightness and your right standing with God go forth as the light. One translation says he'll make your innocence shine forth, right? Uh, and your justice and right uh, as the shining sun of the noonday. Be still, rest in the Lord, wait for him, and patiently lean yourself upon him. Fret not yourselves because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Cease for, from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourselves. It tends only to evil doing. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those who wait and hope and look for the Lord shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while and the evil doers will be no more. Hallelujah. Though you look with care where they used to be, they will not be found. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and they gnash at them with their teeth. And the Lord laughs at the wicked for he sees that their own day of defeat is coming. The wicked draw a sword and bend their bows to cast down the poor and the needy to slay those who walk uprightly. The swords of the wicked shall enter their own hearts and the bows shall be broken. Better is little th that the righteous have than the abundance of many who are wrong and wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the consistently righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright and blameless, and their heritage will abide forever. They shall not be put to shame in the time of evil, and in the days of famine they will be satisfied. Come on, hallelujah. But the wicked shall perish, 
And the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. And as the glory of pastures, they shall vanish like smoke. They will be consumed away. The wicked borrow and pay not again. But the uncompromisingly righteous deal kindly and give, uh, for they are able. For such as are blessed of God inherit the earth. But they who are cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are directed and established by the Lord when he delights in in their way. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord grasps his hand in support and upholds him. I have been young, and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging bread. All day long. They are merciful and deal generously. They lend and their offspring are blessed. Hallelujah. And I'm going to stop right there. I don't know who that's for, but someone needs to hear, hallelujah, that God is with you. Amen. Don't get upset at the wicked who are flourishing because God has better for you. Amen. So I don't know who that's for, but you better take it. Amen. Now let's get into this. If you have your Bible, open up to the book of Matthew chapter 5. Hallelujah. The book of Matthew, chapter 5. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, bless the reading of your word. I pray that you'd anoint ears to hear. Let hearts be receptive to receive. Father, I pray that you'd anoint my lips to speak forth your word. Make my tongue as the pen of a ready writer. Father, I thank you that you would give me the words to say, that, Lord, as your word goes forth, let it be a seed planted in our hearts. Let it produce fruit 30, 60, 100-fold. Even the online crowd, Father, wherever they're at today, I thank you, Lord, that you would minister to them, that your word would become alive. It wouldn't just be information, but, Father, let it be revelation to us today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Come on, you can say a better amen than that. We've been talking about the supernatural. And I want to talk to you today, what the Lord really put in my heart about is hunger for God. Because if we are going to walk in the supernatural and see supernatural things, hello, we have to be hungry for God. Are you with me? In fact, anything you're going to see, even when you're praying and believing, you need to get hungry for it. When you want a breakthrough... You need to get hungry for the breakthrough. The reason we see healings, or I'll I'll put it this way, the reason that I begin to see healings as I begin to pray for people and lay my hands on them isn't because one day the Lord just said, okay, this is what's going to happen. The Lord already decided. He said, no good thing will I withhold from those who love me, right? But what had happened with me when it comes to healing, not that this message is just about healing, but just as an example of hunger, is when I was in... Bible school, what, 12 years ago now, um, 13 years, somewhere around there, uh, I had a class called Christ the Healer. And there was an assignment that we had to go out, lay hands on a sick person. They couldn't be from the church, couldn't be anyone you knew, had to be a stranger. You had to go find a sick person. We had to pray for them, and they had to get healed. And if they didn't get healed, you pray for someone else. And you pray for people till you get a healing, and then you write a paper about it. Now, of course, that irritates religious people, amen, but people were getting healed, so obviously the Lord wasn't too offended by it because he moved right through that thing, amen. You got to push people out of the boat if you're going to see anything. So anyway, I was too chicken. <laughs> you know, I just come from Coshocton, man. We don't do that kind of stuff here, you know, and so I was so chicken that I didn't pray for anybody, and I failed that class. Just, just not that it's, a, you know, obviously it's, you want to see people healed. But an A is kind of nice, too, you know, and I totally failed that class, and I wasn't upset about the grade. I was upset that I didn't have the boldness to actually step out and pray for people when I was encountering sick people all the time. The Lord was directing people right to me. So this is what I began to do every single day. Uh, I, I would look at my hands, and I just begin to take the scriptures personally. Isn't it interesting? Even though I failed the class, I kind of got it. Because every day I'd look at my hands and I'd say, Father, you said in your word that I would lay my hands on the sick and they'd recover. And I'd look at my hands. I said, these hands. You, know, you got to get like this. I said, these hands. 
these hands in Jesus' name. And I would do this every single day. Thank you, Father, that you're going to use these hands that as they're put on the sick, that they're going to recover. And I, I would begin to pray like that. I found all these scriptures about healing and God using people and the laying on of hands for healing. I got hungry to see people healed. So I says, why? Because I was healed of cancer. And then I knew I was going to be in the ministry. I'd, I'd make a terrible minister if I couldn't pray for the sick. And so I knew I had to go after this thing, and I got hungry for it. And uh, so anyway, I, I had to go up to a pastor's office at the church down in Tampa, and there was this one office two pastors shared, Pastor David, Pastor Daniel McGee. We just had Pastor Daniel McGee here a few you know, months ago. So anyway, I go up, I had to see Pastor David. So he's here, Pastor Daniel McGee is here. And as I walk in and I go up to Pastor David, Pastor Daniel McGee stands up. He said, Brother Zach. I said, yeah, yes, sir, you know. He said, the Lord is going to use you in healing. That's what he said. And he printed off like two pages of scriptures on healing. He said, meditate on these every day. He said, the next altar call you have. I never even had an altar call. What do you mean the next one? I'm a student. He said, the next altar call you have, pray for all the sick. <laughs> so I hijacked someone else's altar call. Anyway, that's another story. Amen. And people got healed. So anyway, uh, and then shortly after that, someone calls my mother. They were in a revival meeting. I never even met this person. They had a vision of me under a tent that said Oral Roberts in a banner over it. And they said I was in there laying hands on the sick. And it was like an Oral Roberts-style crusade. At that point in my life, who's Oral Roberts? I don't know who Oral Roberts, Richard Roberts. I don't know who any of these people are, you know. And they're having these visions. And then, so I remember, I finally prayed for this guy who had been diagnosed with HIV AIDS. And I grabbed this guy, and I began to pray for him, a total stranger. And the power of God hit this dude. <laughs> right, right, it was next to some, like, gas station thing. The power of God hit this dude. Obviously, you know, it's a total stranger. I couldn't follow up with him, but I said, when I prayed, I said, did you feel something? He said, I felt something leave me. He said, I, I, I feel better. I don't know what you just did, but I feel better. And I believe 100% that dude was completely healed by the power of the Holy Ghost and because we've seen people healed since. And so what happened, the whole thing of how I began to see healings, I got hungry to see it. Are you getting this? Now, now, we can just get offended about things, or you can listen to what I'm saying today, and you can get this, because this is kind of the entry point to seeing the supernatural in our lives. Otherwise, all we have is theology and doctrine, and all of that's well and good, but if all we can do is nod in agreement with things we believe in, well, how is that going to shake Kashokton? <laughs> Are you with me? Because the supernatural needs to flow out of your hands. The supernatural needs to flow out of your belly. Jesus said, out of your belly will flow the rivers. So we need that river flowing out of you. And even you watching online, don't think you're exempt. So everybody say hunger. Yeah, this is so important. It says in Matthew 5 and verse 6, it says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Uh, in, in the Amplified Classic, it says, blessed, fortunate, and spiritually prosperous in that state in which the born-again child of God enjoys his favor and salvation are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, uprightness, right standing with God, for they will be completely satisfied. Hallelujah. What's the keys to walking in the supernatural? What's the keys to seeing miracles, to seeing signs and wonders? Well, I'll tell you, I, I believe it's hunger. Amen? Uh, what's the key to having an encounter with God? You know, why is it God uses some people in the, the gifts and the supernatural and others, it seems like they're not used in that way? Because somebody got hungry. Somebody cried out. Somebody saw the need and knew they needed God's help to meet it. Are you with me? And they went after it, and they got hungry. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So hunger, everybody say hunger. Now, Jesus said if we hunger, so there's an if. I'm a computer programmer. I don't know if anyone here has done that, but I think in that way. If this, do this. If you ever get into computer programming, that's the essence of it. If this, do this, right? And Jesus is saying if you hunger, you will be 
filled. Everybody say filled. What does that mean? If I'm empty, it's because I'm not hungry. And it, prayer is not, you know, having the pastor pray for you is not the answer. And reading a book is not the answer, unless it's the Bible. The answer is you getting hungry for God yourself. Because I can't get hungry for you. And your spouse cannot get hungry for you. And nobody else can get hungry for you. You got to get hungry for you. And here's the key. Get hungry and stay hungry. In fact, I would wager to say, I'm more hungry now, Sam, than I have ever have been in my life. I'm, I want to see a, an awakening in Coshocton. I want to see revival. I want to see the outpouring. I want to see this church filled in, with on-fire radical soul winners who are doing the works of Jesus. Uh, yeah, I'm hungry. Are you with me? doesn't mean you have to be animated like I am. It's taken the Lord a long time to get me like this. Amen. But you got to understand I was very shy. So the Lord did a work in me. Amen. But it does mean there's this inward hunger on the inside of you. And you can just be you. You don't have to be anyone else. But you're hungry. Deuteronomy 4.29 says, But if from there you will seek me, inquire for and require me as necessity, the Lord your God, you will find him if you truly seek him with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. In essence, that's what hunger is. You're seeking God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Not if, well, I have extra time this week. Not if, well, I'm, there's nothing better going on, I might as well. Not if, well, I mean, I've just been too busy to read the Bible. I've just been too busy to pray. Now, okay, well, then you are too busy. Hello, you're too busy. And so you need to take some time and spend it with your heavenly father, and you need to go to him and be hungry for him. We don't go to the Lord ceremoniously, religiously. Hello. We, we have a real living relationship with God. Are you with me? So hunger. Uh, Jesus said, if we are hungry, if we are thirsty, we will be filled. And as I said a moment ago, that means if we, we are running on empty, it's because we're not hungry like we should be hungry. So let's talk about hunger. Well, if you know anything about hunger, which I'm sure you do if you're alive, amen, and you've had the human experience, uh, then you know you have a belly. Amen. Come on, who's ever had your belly talk to you? Oh, it does. Amen. Sometimes your belly wants some things. Amen. And uh, you have appetite, right? And so, you know, some people, how many of you guys know everyone's appetite is different? You know, there are things that Edie eats that I'm like, ugh, bleh, you know? There are things that I eat that Edie's like, ugh. What is that, you know? And it just is what it is. We all have different appetites. And our appetite is what? It's, it's, related, it's related to hunger. And so I would ask you, and Jesus, is, isn't he awesome how he uses our hunger in relationship to the Father and the things of God? Is, I mean, I love it. You know, the, you got to understand the things of the natural are patterned after the things of the Spirit. Are you with me? And so here's Jesus using this example, you know, basically, well, what are you hungry for? That, that scripture is supposed to make you think, right? What am I hungry for? What is my appetite, right? Um, I always use this example when I minister on hunger. There's nothing worse, I imagine, for, you know, a, a, a mom who spends the, the day in the kitchen making a really nice meal, right? It takes a while. I know I've cooked a couple things. It takes a while. Amen. We appreciate people who spend time and make a good meal. Amen. But, you know, there's nothing worse. You spend all that time. You spend all that energy. That You spend your day in there cooking and, and getting the table ready. And then you call the family in for dinner. And then the kids, what are the, you know, they, they pick at the food, right? They just pick at it. And they're not eating anything. They're not eating the casserole. They're not eating the green beans. They're not eating the mat. Sorry, sorry I, I'm actually, I didn't eat breakfast, so just so you know. If I salivate a little bit. Well, so they're not eating. They're just picking at it. What does that tell you as the parent? Huh? You were snacking, right? You were eating ding-dongs and, and, and what are the, Twinkies, and, right? And you were eating something. What did you eat, right? Come on, parents, have you ever asked that? You know, I know my mom did, but if I picked at it, you know, 
I'm like, well, did you see the Rice Krispie treats? Half the pan is gone. That was me, you know? And so, <laughs> you know, you can't just eat one Rice Krispie treat. You have to have at least half the pan, you know? And, uh, you know, if you're just picking up the food, it means that you, 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 you ate junk food. And so now you're not hungry for the real. And it's just like that with spiritual things. Where as believers, if we fill ourselves with the world, if we fill ourselves with spiritual junk food throughout the week, on Sunday morning, you think you're going to be hungry for the real? It's going to be yawn, yawn, snore, sore. When is this over? I need to do this. I got to clean up my yard. I got this and that and the other thing to attend to. you know. And, and so let me just get this out of the way this morning because I have to do this because I have to make appearance, right, and look like a good Christian. And I know at the River Church, you know, none of us should be like that, but it, it is what it is. What is your appetite? What have you, what do you fill yourself with? So, um, hallelujah. If you're always eating junk food, you'll never, you'll never have an appetite for the real. Um, you know, I, I think it's amazing, you know, because here's what people have told me. Well, your services are too, too long, right? So, you know, we go to the river, and it's just too long. You know, you start at 10. You're out at 12.30, but sometimes 1, sometimes 1.30, you know, and it's just too long. You can't expect people to sit through that. Well, they do. Hello. Maybe not everyone in Coshocton. I know if we tweak things, we could fill this place and have a nice entertainment center. We can make this place look like a rock concert every week, and then we could go and just get titillated, right, and just, you know, just listen and get our ears tickled, right? Are you with me? And, but that's not what this place is about. I'm not, we're not here to cater to people who can't sit more than an hour. Right? If you're worldly and you're uncomfortable here, that's good. That's good news to me. Repent and change and get on fire and let's go. Win souls. Amen. We can't cater to everybody. We, we had a, a pastor was coming, you know, on our Sunday night services. And he, I don't. We didn't make him come. He was driving an hour to get here, and, and just he kept coming. And then one day he called my mom and chewed mom out because of my services. He said, he said, we don't do this at my church. Mom said, this is not your church. <laughs> it's like he needed to be reminded, you know. It's not your church. Well, you can't just have people sit there that long because we were getting out at like 11, 12, start at 7. God would move. The power of God would hit the place. He would sit there like a statue. Just sit there. Nothing. No emotion. No nothing coming out of him. No amen. In. And so anyway, we're not here to cater to everybody, right? Amen. So, but I think it's funny. Well, it's too long. Well, interesting. People can watch an Avengers movie for three and a half hours. Riveted. I mean, like riveted. I mean, they had that, uh, the, 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 you know, the, oh, I don't even know what it is. They had that Justice League movie, you know, when it was like two and a half hours, and then they put an extended edition that's like four and a half hours. Who can sit there for four and a half hours and watch a movie? I watched 10 minutes. I was bored out of my mind. I clicked the thing off. But I'm feeling, you talk about exciting, revival. You talk about exciting, healing, signs and wonders. You talk, we carry something Hollywood can't compete with if we release it on Sunday mornings, if we let it loose, or as mom would say, you got to let it rip, right? You got to, because, you know, people tell us, you know, well, don't try to compete with the world. Compete with the world. Gag me with a spoon. They can't compete with us when we release the power of the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So, you know, I don't, I don't, like hearing the excuses because it all at the end of the day boils down to what are you hungry for and if you're not hungry for God an hour service is too long for you you want an hour dry cleaning service in by 10 out by 11 which I wouldn't even get dressed up for that I'm not even dressed up today you know so you know amen so it's it's what you're hungry for when you know in the early days and I'm still like this you know I would go to revival meetings I've been in meetings look I was in a meeting. It started at 7. I got there at 6 to get a good seat. So, so I'm there at 6. That service got out at 3.30 in the morning. Yeah. And you better believe at 9 o'clock, the first group left. Right? You, you can watch it. You can time it when people start leaving. 9, 9.30, the first group leaves because they got to catch Tucker Carlson on Fox News or whatever. So they get up and they leave. 
and this is too long now, seven, eight, nine, two and a half hours. We had revival. They leave. 10 o'clock, the next group leaves. 11 o'clock, the next group leaves. 12 o'clock, half the place left. Half. In fact, I remember in the meeting, the pastor went up and he acted like he was shutting it down. He did. He said, well, thank you guys for coming to diet. And then he just stood there and immediately half the place got up. And you could tell they were angry that it went so long. You know, they got their stuff and they, they come on, Ethel, we're going to go to the awful waffle, waffle house, you know. You know, which is funny. They leave the revival meetings and they go to the waffle house and they spend two hours there chatting, hungry for the, you know, for, for whatever, fellowship. So when half the place left, he just stood there and smiled. And there was a, you know, lady on the keyboard playing. He's just smiling. And it was like 10 minutes in when everybody left. Then he just started to sing, holy, 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 Lord God almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. He just starts singing that. And then the keyboards, you know, holy, 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 merciful. Now it's like 1230. Merciful and mighty God in three persons, blessed Trinity. And he's singing that. Now I was there in the meeting. And so I stood up. And I closed my eyes, lifted my hands. I'm singing. And the half that stayed, we all were singing. One hour, two hours. Three hours singing that chorus. It felt like 10 minutes, man. In fact, I don't care if you believe me, I was there. It sounded like the, the roof came off the place and everybody there heard angels singing. Every single one of us. So I said, what did it sound like? The most beautiful sound that didn't stop. There was no like the angels had to take a breath. It was just a consistent heavenly sound and there was just keyboards, but there was other things going on. And, and ever, I mean, there were people who tried to go to the pot, and they were on their face next to the restrooms. I mean, the glory of God came in that place. I'm so glad I didn't have to go because, you know, i got to get up early tomorrow. I mean, they're having revival here. They, they want us to be here at 930 for the next day. Are you with me? So when you're hungry for God, you get into the secret things. When you're hungry for God, you get to experience things no one else, no one else gets to see. Come on. You've got to ask yourself the question, if Jesus was going to raise the dead, would he ask you to leave? Right? Come on, think about that. And so, for me, I always try to be the, the, the kind of person that, like, I'm, I'm the last one out of the building. Right? When I'm sitting in church, I want to see everything. And when it, even when it, they say it's over, you know, and I used to do this all the time when, when I was a student, when I was down in Tampa. I, didn't, I was one of the last people to leave because I knew just because they said it was over doesn't mean God's done. And I wanted to see it all. I wanted to see everything that God was doing. Hello, are you with me? And I did. I got to see wonderful miracles. I got to see amazing things. I'll, I'll never forget bringing this guy. He had just got saved out of atheism, and he wasn't going to go that night, but I brought him. And, uh, and we're sitting there, and it was at the very end, and he's ready to go. I said, no, just wait. He said, what do you mean? It's over. It's not over until the fat angel sings, you know. And uh, I said, no, no, just wait. And, uh, and then suddenly this one lady had, had a walker, and she goes up to the minister who was done preaching. The service was over. She goes up to the sh the, this, this minister, and she asks for prayer, and he lays hands on her, and he takes the walker, and he throws it on the stage, and this lady walks away totally healed. I mean, it was like, cool. And then he goes, because oh, he just got saved. He said, this is like Harry Potter. I said, no, it's not like Harry Potter. You know, he's like in the world, you know. I said, this is not Harry Potter. He's like, what is this? I, I said, look, it's in the Bible. <laughs> you know, you, you got to take people out of that mindset, man, of that junk, you know. And he said, he's like, no, you don't understand. I've never seen this stuff. He said, this is amazing. He, and he even said, why do people leave? I don't know, because they're too busy. They have, uh, you know, they got to go to Denny's and get moons over my hammy. Are you with me? You know, too busy. The, you know, the, the church people can be the worst around revival. You know, sometimes you have to run people off just to have a move of God because people are just coming sanctimoniously, religiously, just to come. And for, for I mean, it's like, why come? 
When we come, we should come hungry. When we come, we should come thirsty. When we come, we got to understand we're coming into the presence of an almighty God. Are you with me? And so, you know, I know when I was a kid and I was picking up the food, or if I ever had an attitude with my mother, she would tell me this, you better have an attitude adjustment. And I knew that was the first warrant. Shots fired. I knew if mom says attitude adjustment, I better make an adjustment right now. Because if I don't, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I knew that as a kid. I better adjust. So as believers today, that was a great lesson to me because why do believers want this long, drawn-out thing to bring change in their life when we can just yield ourselves to the Word of God and just decide? It's a decision. It's a decision. I'm going to be hungry. I'm going to be thirsty. So I said, well, I don't feel like it. You don't, when, what does that have to do with anything? You just got to do it. You just got to be hungry. You got to cut everything else aside. Who's ever been on a diet, Right? And you go in, the first thing you should do is when you're on a diet, is you go into the kitchen. I don't care if you just bought it yesterday. You go in and you throw it in the trash. And then you don't go to the dumpster later to dig it out. Right? You throw it all in the trash. Why do you throw it in the trash when you start a diet? Because if it's there, you will eat it. Right? Don't look at me like that. You know you will. Amen. You will eat that thing. Amen. Especially on a diet. It's even worse. You know, me, me and my wife, we've been doing be veggies and fruits this whole week. Only veggies, only fruits. We went back to the garden and uh, no, it's, we're just trying to like, we realize we just eat meat and pastries and, you know, bread. And so we're just, just doing it. And uh, one thing, and this is, you know, just like you had to come up and confess your sin, I guess in front of my wife now, I got to confess that one thing she didn't throw away was this little chocolate cone things in the fri in the freezer the little ice cream what are those called what is it what are those called what are they called drumsticks they're little mini drumsticks and she doesn't know i've been the <laughs> i ate half a sleeve <laughs> yeah she doesn't know that i had to confess that Ooh, i feel better now you know you get it off your chest i just feel way better Whew. thanks i know you forgive me but anyway uh that just felt so much better yeah, but she didn't throw it away, so it was right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, what did that have to do with anything? Okay, your appetite. Amen. So you have to change your appetite. And so appetites develop. You, who knows you have taste buds? Who's ever had to acquire a taste? Right? Like matcha tea or green tea. Like green tea, I had to acquire a taste. Ugh. I could not do green tea. No, I like green tea. I think it's pretty great, you know? I remember as a kid, my mom would always say, Zach, you just drink soda pop and you drink juice and tea. She said, you have to drink water. I'm so thankful for my mom because she would just spell it out to me. Like she would just tell me what I have to do. And uh, she said, you need to start drinking water. So I take a cup and I go to the sink and I pour a big glass of water. I thought, well, how hard can that be? I don't think I'd ever remember drinking a glass of water in my life, you know, up at this point. I'm like seven years old, seven, eight. And I go, and I just pour a glass, and I take a drink, and I took the first drink of just water, and I spewed it into the sink. <laughs> I thought it was the nastiest thing I had ever put in my mouth. And it's just water. There's no taste. There's no nothing. It's just water. And when I went to take a swig, I couldn't stomach it. And so this is, this is how I changed that. Uh, every day I would go. And uh, I would take a big glass of water and I would chug it. You know, I've just chugged the whole thing because I knew I needed it, you know. And I chugged the whole water. And after I did that for like a week, two weeks, oh, I like water now. I could drink. I mean, I, I go through water all through the day. But I had to acquire the taste, right? Come on, who's ever had to acquire a taste? Yeah, the River Church is an acquired taste. Who's found that out? Amen. Come on, who's found it out? It's a little different, right? I mean, it's different. It's, oh, there they go, a half hour of worship, which you've not seen anything yet. We're kicking it up to an hour when we're on the hill, when we have the whole band. It's going to be an hour, an hour, an hour, 20 minutes, somewhere around there. You think 1230 is bad. We're going to get out at 2 o'clock, 1.30, 2 o'clock. It's going to be the main event. We're going to give Jesus the best Sunday morning in this region. Are you with me? We're not, we're not going to shorten. We're going more. So it'll be another acquired taste for some of you. But when you love to worship, it ain't no 
nothing, man. It's like, ah, uh, you know what I mean? When you don't like, to, when you are not a worshiper, worship's the worst part. Your legs get sore, you know, it's boring. Uh, I don't like that song. You know, when you're not a worshiper, it's like the worst thing. But when you're a worshiper, it's so easy to get lost. It's so easy to worship. It's like so easy. Are you with me? But so, you know, again, it's hunger. So, hallelujah. Okay, so the river's acquired taste. Amen. Have an offering. Uh, he preaches two sermons, sometimes three. You know, when he greets and then the offering. Why does he always have to talk about the offering? And then why, why does he always uh, do this? And then, uh, you know, come on, who knows? Amen. But it's fine. But then you acquire it and then it's like, Great, praise God. We come together with the saints. We enjoy the presence of God together. Amen. Our lives are changing. We're seeing souls saved. Amen. So you, you have to acquire things. Just like uh, in the natural, eating the wrong food can cause sickness and uh, can cause disease. And, uh, and it's the same, um, it's the same with, with spiritual things so when you're eating the wrong spiritual food you're going to have all kinds of issues who knows in the natural you eat the wrong food how many illnesses and sickness just comes from the wrong food right too much sugar in people's diets you know too much trans fat trans fat is the worst thing you can eat you know and it's in pastries it's in hamburgers all that stuff you know saturated fat you're only supposed to have a little bit of saturated fat every you know each day and then the other two fats you can, that's fine. It lowers bad cholesterol, but then you just go and you eat what the world gives you. Who knows? Your body is like in self-destruct mode. Come on. Who knows what I'm talking about? Your body is like trying to destroy itself, you know, by what we put in our mouth. So then every kind of disease, heart disease, cancers, right? Out of some of the foods, there's going to come a day where we're going to be able to feed people. I, I'm believing God that there'll be a day at the river church where we'll have land where people can actually come and get like real food come on who knows like they have messed up the whole food chain okay anyway don't get me on that so disease and sickness and diabetes cholesterol problems heart disease it all has to do a lot of times with just the food we eat but it's the same with spiritual food if we are you know spending time consuming the things of the world even bad doctrine hello even like in the church, that's just like wrong, messed up doctrine. It, it will mess you up. You, you, what do people have? Pride, like diseases, you know, not diseases, but issues in their spirit, man. Pride, bitterness, jealousy, unforgiveness, hello, resentment, uh, stinginess. All these things come from what they are getting, hello, uh, what they're filling themselves with through the week. Hallelujah. Have you ever heard you are what you eat? Amen. <laughs> it's the same with the spirit. Who understands that? It's the same with spiritual things. You are what you eat. Amen. I'm a person of revival because every week I am getting into the, to what is God doing on the planet, right? I am filling myself with revival and what God is doing. And that's how I stay that week. You know, I, I could just as easy take a week, fill myself with every entertainment of the world, and drag in Sunday morning. Well, y'all pray for me. It's just been a, it's been a hard week. Come on, who's glad I don't do that? Well, then why do some of you do that? Because I have to look at you. <laughs> you know, I actually have to look at you. So if I'm not doing it, you should follow suit anyway. You know, so people try to make excuses. Well, I, I don't understand what I'm reading. I, I tried to read the Bible. I, I, I just don't understand what I'm reading. Okay, well, it's the same. You might not understand all the nutrition in the food you're eating, but you still eat it. Man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's just an excuse. Are you with me? It would help to get a Bible and a translation you can understand. You know, if you have a hard time with King James, you don't have to just stick with King James. There are other translations out there that are good. Billy Graham recommended this one, the NLT. He recommended that. Who thinks Billy Graham was called by God? <laughs> Amen. Uh, ESV is, is a highly accurate translation. Amplified classic, just as good, but that's not really one to just read through. But, you know, it starts with getting a Bible you can understand. Hello. 
But then it's at the end of the day, a lot of that's just excuses because I remember I was a 10-year-old and I read through the King James Bible. I understood every word I was reading. I was a 10-year-old. Uh-oh. Well, I can't understand. Well, you're not inviting the Holy Ghost to come and give you revelation of what you're reading. You gotta ask him to actually come and help you. Okay, so people make excuses. Why well, don't I, I don't understand why I'm reading? Well, I don't remember. I, I read it and you know, and, and anyone can be like that when you're reading. And and if your mind is wandering when you're reading something, I mean I've read secular books. You know, I'm reading through whatever, you know, b- book and uh if my mind is wandering and I'm thinking about other things, I'm thinking about, you know, what the ferrets are up to, I'm not gonna remember what I read. That's why you got to focus. Come on, okay. Is, should I change the subject? Some of you went home. Amen. It's like, what do you do? Amen. So, okay, I don't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday, but did I eat? Yeah. Are you with me? I don't remember what I ate two weeks ago, but did I eat? Yeah, yeah I did. Amen. Are you getting this? Because I don't want to hear the excuses. Well, I don't read the Bible. I don't remember it. I don't read the Bible. I can't retain it. Well, you know, it's the same with food. I don't remember what I ate two weeks ago, but I ate. Man does not live by bread alone. Food is to your body what the Word of God is to your spirit. You know, Smith Wigglesworth said, many believers feed their body three hot meals a day, but they feed their spirit one cold snack a week. Come on, who knows what I'm talking about? Is come to church, that's the only thing that they get. But we should be feeding our spirit all the time. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, if you want the real, you have to get rid of the fake. Set things aside, press into the Lord. If we seek satisfaction, listen to me now. If we seek satisfaction only from earthly things, then we will we will be happy when we feel full and sad when we don't. And we won't realize that we are missing true fulfillment and contentment. Jesus said to those who attended to their bodies and flesh's desires, uh, but not to their spirit, woe to you who are full now for you shall hunger and suffer want. So we can go fill ourselves with earthly things and it's pleasurable for a season, right? We go and have the highs of life. I mean, when I went paramotoring, I was in a good mood. I was like, oh, I was just in the clouds, rapture simulation, you know. It was fun. You know what? Two weeks later, I forgot about it. It's not like I'm like, that was a life-changing event. It was just an event. So the things of the earth, well, it's fine to enjoy life. It's totally fine. But if you're just living for the next high, and that's all you get, Jesus said, those who are full now, you're going to suffer hunger later. But Jesus said, I'm going to give you water that springs up to everlasting life. And the water I'm going to give you, hallelujah, you'll never thirst again. Are you with me? I could die, not that I'm believing to die tomorrow. Amen. I'm going to live a full life. Amen. But if my life was required of me, even today, I can say confidently, I, I did everything I could. You know, I'm, I didn't, oh, I wish I had this done this on my bucket list. Are you kidding me? I'm going to go into heaven. I'm not even going to think about the bucket list on earth. Are you with me? Live your life for eternity. Don't live your life for the here and now. People live their life, especially younger people. I feel like when people get older, when they've had the family, you know, the, they raise the kids and they've had the house, they've had the nice things, it's kind of like, you know, what then, you know, but especially younger people who are always chasing money. They're always chasing a house. They're chasing the things of the earth. You know, all of that's temporary. Are you with me? And it's, it comes and then one day it's going to have to go. Are you with me? So this is the way to live. Hallelujah. There are people who stuff themselves with wealth, food, drink, entertainment, video games, and whatever else they desire, and yet they are still miserable on the inside. There is a hunger and thirst deep inside of every person that can only be satisfied by the Lord himself. Psalm 119, 155 says, Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not nor hunger for your statutes. Jude 18 says, 
They told you beforehand in the last days, in the end time, there will be scoffers who seek to gratify their own unholy desires, following after their ungodly passions. Hallelujah. John 6, Jesus told his disciples, For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. And Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus told the Samaritan woman at the well, all who drink of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never, no, never be thirsty anymore. But the water that I will give him shall become a spring of water welling up, flowing, bubbling continually within him unto eternal life. Come on, church. Help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is anyone getting anything out of this? Hallelujah. I can change the topic. Amen. Some of you look like a little bored, so, you know, sorry to bore you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hunger for God. Okay, well, let's end here. Glory to God. So, listen to this. If you want to be filled, because hunger and thirst after righteousness, what? You'll be filled, right? Hallelujah. Nudge your husband. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, if you're going to be filled, what, what's going on? You have to be empty, right? So, how many of you guys know to fill something, you got to empty it first? Amen? It's hard to fill something that's already full of something. So, you know, I do this all the time with, when I'm praying and, you know, talking and communing with the Lord. When I go to him in prayer, one of the first things I do is I say, Lord, I empty myself of anything that's not of you. And that's a good way to pray. That's something good to do. Lord, empty me. Lord, I just empty myself right now of anything that's not of you, anything of the world, anything of the flesh, anything of pride, bitterness, whatever it is. Come on, who's ever done that? Lord, I empty myself because if you want to be filled by the Lord, you got to be empty of everything else. So, and that could be a process. Sometimes that's not an instant thing. Sometimes that's a process. Who knows? It takes some time where you got to go through this journey of emptying yourself. But, you know, you can get to the point where it's like, no, I'm going to get this thing out. I want to be filled with God and God alone. I'm going to forget about everything else. Remember, we are to have no other gods, what, before him. So anything you focus on more than him, anything you put before him, what is that? That's another God. Come on, who knows what I'm talking about? If something is more important, you know, uh, Vincent, he, he's going to be here. I'll tell on him. When he was pastoring, he got in a lot of trouble at his church, you know. And uh, not that I don't think he cared much. He's, you know, he knew the pastor. He was the pastor. But he told his church because every time during sports season, it's like the attendance dipped, you know, because everyone was out. Their kids were in sports. So all the Christians, instead of going to church and bringing their kids to church, they went out to their sports game. So the next Sunday, he had them all together. He said, you guys worship your kids. He said, your kids have become your God. And, oh, they didn't like that. You know, well, we're creating mem memories. We'll create them in church. Hey, if every Christian stood and said, Sunday is the day we worship God, sorry, our kid cannot be in sports. You take the star players out. Are you with me? They'll change those days. But here's the thing. The Christians, just whatever. It's Sunday football. Sunday football. Yeah. You know, there's, there was one church that I was going to. They shut their Sunday service down to, have, to ha play the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. I don't even watch football. I think football's kind of, I'm sorry if you, you know, I'm, I, I'll really mess with things. Now. now, rugby's pretty great, but Super Bowl. Okay, anyway, hallelujah. I better get off that one. I'll get in real trouble. Amen. God or football? God, I think I'm going to choose God. It's no, a no-brainer to me. Okay, let me, let me take something that's nearer to me, because since I don't like football, that's easy for me to say. Uh, God or video games? <laughs> God. Amen. God or, or paramotoring? God. Oh, I'm trying to think. What do I like? What do I do? What? The, the Steam Deck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So at the end of the day... <laughs> What'd you say? What? 
<laughs> oh, was I supposed to do a comparison? <laughs> yeah, no. God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. I got to give the Steam Deck next week, don't I? That's going on the altar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, why'd you have to bring that up? It's not even right. I mean, really. It's not even what I'm talking about, Edie. <clears throat> so, but we are to have no other gods before him. Let me get off that one. Uh, look, when you are hungry for God, you are naturally going to seek him. I mean, in essence, that's it. When you're hungry for him, naturally, you are going to begin to seek him. Okay, so... I was hungry for Yucatan, right, not long ago. So what did I do? I went to Yucatan, and I got me some Mexican food, right? Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> when you're hungry. So sometimes we get like a craving. Oh, we want Molly's Woo. Molly's Woo, it's a restaurant in Columbus that we like, you know. So sometimes we'll go all the way from Coshocton. We will drive our butts all the way to Columbus to sit there and wait to get Molly's Woo. Why? We're hungry for it. You're hungry for Taco Bell, you go have Taco Bell, right? When you are hungry, come on, who's ever done something like that? Man, I'm really craving Chipotle. Why isn't there one in Coshocton? Let me go to New Philly and get it, right? Let me go to Zanesville and get whatever. Yeah, she knows she just did that, you know? So, but when you're hungry for God, you are naturally going to go after the things of God. So, for me, when I was 18, and I'll wrap this up, and then we'll receive communion, and we're going to have a great week. Amen? So when I uh, was healed of cancer when I was 16, two years later, I knew the Lord healed. I knew I encountered something that I'd never seen in the churches that I had been involved with, and I got really hungry for God. I got, when, when I was 18, I was so hungry for God, and Mom was right there with me. She was just as hungry. We both realized there was more, right? There was just more than what we were getting at church on Sunday morning, okay? And the Bible studies on the side. There was something more. We're reading things about the gifts of the Spirit. And for me, once I read the book of Acts, huh, it was over. Once I read the book of Acts chapter 2 and Acts 1-8, and I found all these scriptures, and I saw in every book there was something called the baptism in the Holy Ghost. I mean, I never went to a Pentecostal church. I found that just by reading the Bible, I got hungry. I got thirsty. I didn't speak in tongues. But me and, and mom, especially, we, we traveled, man. We, <laughs> I mean, we drove one time all the way to Florida because we heard there was a revival going on. It turned out not to be a revival. It turned out to be, uh, it was called a revival, but it was a lot of craziness going on there. But anyway, but when you're hungry, you just go. You know, if you want Chinese food, you'll go to any Chinese restaurant. You might get food poisoning. But it's fine. That's what you wanted, right? And so, you know, we, we went and we sought God. And I remember I drove all through the night. Mom didn't want to drive through the night. I drove all night. And, and for five hours of driving, I just said, Lord, I'm hungry for you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I'm desperate for you. And we get all the way there. We get to the revival and, like, nothing happened. But it, but it was fine. We were hungry. We were on a quest, right, in search of the anointing, right? And that, that was the story of, of how I got to where I am right now, preaching to you. It's just hungry. And so then one day I'm watching TV and I flip through the channels and God saw I was hungry, man. And, uh, you know, and I see Dr. Robney and we end up going to one of his meetings and, you know, just, we're just hungry. But, but the point I'm trying to make is we drove three hours, 14 hours, 18 hours, seven hours, just to be in a place where God was moving. Are you thankful for the River Church? I mean, come on, where God's free to move. Amen. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, people drive everywhere searching for something, and, and God put it right here in our city. Are you with me? It's like right here. Amen. God can smack you right in your seat this morning if you hunger. So, so at this point, cut the drive out. I mean, you can come Sunday morning. If you get hungry and you get thirsty, if everyone else gets nothing, you'll get something. You know, so going somewhere else to get what God's pouring out here makes no sense to me. None. Hallelujah. So we got hungry. We got thirsty. We got desperate. And uh, 
and finally, it culminated for me. It was a year of seeking God. It was one year of seeking him. But then it was one week of, I'm going to get this or I'm going to die, man. I mean, that's how I felt. I mean, it was like, not that I was actually going to die, but it was like, as the deer pants for the water. So my soul longs after God. I got to that place in my life. And for one week, I was working at Bueller's, I was bagging groceries, and one week, I pressed into God. Like the woman with the issue of blood pressed in the crowd, I pressed into God. And I began to think about getting God's attention. You know, I didn't even know if that was something scriptural at that time. It was just something like, you know, I like, like, you can get people's attention, right? What if I get God's attention? He'll come down and visit me, Right? And, and I, I stood on the scripture, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, and he's looking for someone to show himself strong on their behalf. I took that scripture and live it out in Cooperdale, going to a church that didn't believe in the Holy Ghost, didn't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. Hello. I got hungry. And uh, I mean, I would ask God every day. I said, Lord, I want you to touch me. Touch me? I didn't know what touch me meant. Touch me was... In my mind at that time meant, you know, I'd been in a service where some lady's singing and it's like an anointed song and you get goosebumps, right? Come on, you know. I thought, and if that's God, if God is goosebumps, I, may I be covered in them. You know, I just, I didn't even know what I was asking for. Touch me. What does touch me mean? I had no idea what touch me meant. But I'm asking God, this is why I said for one week, God, if I'm anointed of you, touch me. I didn't know what the anointing meant. I didn't know what the anointing was. I didn't realize what I was doing was I was putting my hand, I was feeling around, and my finger was about to connect into a light socket, like an empty one. Like, I was about to, I didn't realize what, I, what was about to happen to me. I didn't. God, look, you know what, what I was doing? I was getting ready to go, on a, go to a Baptist church to intern full-time to become their youth pastor. That's, why is that funny to you? Amen. <laughs> I would be in Colorado right now at a Baptist church and I would be positioning myself probably to be pastor or whatever and I would be totally in the flesh and I'd probably be smoking weed on the side. I mean, I'll just be honest with you. I mean, I because at least that gives you a buzz. Religion doesn't give you a buzz. So anyway, hallelujah. Not that I smoke or ever will. Amen. And not that you should. Hallelujah. I'm just saying. Oh, so this is, oh my gosh. It's a joke. It's a joke. At least I'm honest. Religious people aren't honest. I'll be honest with you. I'll be totally honest with you. I would have had three Steam Decks. So that, that was it, you know. And I was asking God, I, I want your fire. I want, I want you to touch me. I didn't know what that meant. And, and I was waking up in the middle of the night. And this is hunger. This is hunger. This is hunger. I was waking up in the middle of the night, and I would, I would wake up. I would throw my hands in the air, and I would say, God, touch me. God, if you've called me to the ministry, touch me. <laughs> no idea what I was saying. I could have just as easily rolled over and went back to bed, but I didn't because I was hungry. So do you see it was a year, but it was a week where it got intense. And I cried out to the Lord uh, for, for one week, and then... Many of you know, the, know the, the, the story of that Sunday. My parents were in Pennsylvania. I was 18 years old. I had an Alienware computer. It was a Make-A-Wish got it for me. It was a gaming computer. And I was going to play video games all night. I didn't go to church that morning because I knew, not because I, I didn't want to be in the house of God. That church was kind of coming against me and my mom as we were getting hungry. I mean, Sunday morning, they'd like preach against what we were stepping into, which was hunger for God. We were shaking. They even preached the message, don't shake the boat. You tell Linda, don't shake the boat. She's turning the boat over. You know, I mean, it's just my mom, you know. You tell Linda Weber, don't, don't ruffle feathers. Mom's plucking them out, man. She's, it's just how God made her. She was the youngest child of like 12 brothers. Are you kidding me? She's tough. And so, you know, they're like coming against us. So that's why I didn't go to church. And in fact, uh, one guy in leadership there, listen, you know what he said? He said, we don't want any of that Holy Spirit junk in this church. And he didn't say junk. He said something else. 
And he came to one of my meetings, and he had the spirit of murder on him, man, because he didn't like what was going on. So you think I want to go there Sunday morning? No thanks. You're, at least I knew enough that you don't grieve the Holy Ghost, and you don't quench the Holy Ghost, and you don't blaspheme the Holy Ghost. So I didn't go. Little did I know that night they were having a Sunday night service. I wasn't planning to go. I, I got a Pepsi and a bag of Sun Chips, and I'm on my way to go to my you know, bedroom, play video games. And as I'm on my way there, the Lord speaks. And he says, go to church tonight. And when I heard that, it was, it was, it was boom. It stopped me in my tracks. Go to church tonight. And so I stopped, and I thought, I'm not going to church tonight. I'll be, I'll be late. You know, and I don't want to be late for church. I live out in Cooperdale. It's going to take me 35 minutes to get there, and I'm going to be late, and everyone's going to glare at me. You're late. Like, I didn't know that, you know. And so I thought, I'm not going to go to church tonight. So I keep walking. I get to the middle of the couch. Go to church tonight. It stopped me again. And I thought, is this God speaking to me? And I looked up. I said, Lord, I, I don't, I'm not going to go to church tonight. You know, like, I, I'm telling him my plans. Like, this, like, you want me to go? I wasn't planning to go. Like, he didn't know that. And so I keep walking, I get to the end of that couch, and it was like a bolt of lightning hit me, and it, I shook, and I heard it the third time, go to church tonight. And so I said, yes, Lord, and when I said, yes, Lord, a surge of excitement hit me. I felt like God was going to do something in that service that night, and I got really, really excited, and here's an element, you want to, you're hungry, be expectant. You're hungry? Good. That's, that's half the battle. Next phase, expect, expect God to move. Because David said, what would have become of me had I not expected the Lord, you know? And, uh, and so I, I expected it. I drove from Cooperdale to Coshocton to the church. The whole way there, I said, Lord, thank you. I know that tonight you're going to touch me. And I did one thing you should never do. And uh, not that it's wrong, but I began to work out how God was going to do it because I knew he's telling me to go. So if he's telling me to go, he's going to touch me. If he's going to touch me, I told the Lord how he can do it. And uh, don't do that because you can think of 10 ways God's going to do it. He's going to think of number 10 or uh, number 11, right? He's going to exceed what you think. And so I thought, well, man, I've, seen, I've been to these revivals. I know what's going to happen. I'm going to walk in and like... Man, people are going to be being touched by God, and I bet someone's going to be speaking in tongues, and someone's going to have an interpretation. And pro this stuff never happened at that church, man. Are you kidding me? Wishful thinking, you know. I thought, man, I'm going to show up, and you know, I bet they're going to lay hands on me, and I'm going to be on the ground, and you know, I'm just like, woo, you know. This is how he's going to do it. And so I'm so excited, and I, I get out of the car. I almost run to the door, and I open the two back doors, and you go right into the sanctuary from, from there. And I open them up, and the, the stench of religion and tradition hit me right in the face. And it was cold, dry, and exactly like I predicted. Everyone looked back at me. You know, and it was a type of church. You had the pulpit. You had 14 rows. You had three back rows, padded pews, 14 rows of padded pews, three rows in the back, metal fold-out chairs. Everybody sat in the back. And I'm not, I'm not even, like, uh, I'm not lying to you. Everyone sat in the back three rows. It's like, would the ushers give them some binoculars so they can see? It's like, go out to the parking lot so you can actually... So long story short, I go, I took a seat in the back with them, and then I thought, well, I don't like sitting in the back. And so I took a trip to the restroom, and when I came back, it was shorter to just sit on the second row, and that's what I did. I sat about on the second row. And it was a boring sermon. I don't know what he preached on, and he's a good guy, good guy. I would never come against him, but it was just I got nothing out of it. And in fact, I, it was kind of like, there was no substance of what was being said. It was kind of just words, you know, with no power. And so I uh, was pretty upset, you know. I, it was almost like hope deferred makes the heart sick. I was almost like, man, I, Lord, I thought you told me you were going to touch. I, you told me to come. Why? What? Uh, eh, uh. And so now I'm just struggling through the whole service because it was a dead meeting. And so... Anyway, at the end, they did three songs of worship. The first song goes, and, uh, you know, I never had a problem worshiping at the age of 14. You know, I'll tell this testimony.
probably this week uh, with the students. Um, but when I was 14, I, I in worship, I had an encounter with God when I was 14 years old. I actually, uh, angels like held my hands up and I'm, I'll tell that story probably Tuesday. If anyone wants to come, I'm teaching on the gift of discerning of spirits and I'll tell that story. I don't tell it often because it's kind of like people just blink at you, you know, and these are holy things, you know? And so from that moment, I always worship from my heart, you know? And, uh, so anyway, I'm worshiping eyes closed, hands raised, everyone else in the back doing their thing. <laughs> And, but inwardly, and I'm grumbling to the Lord, inwardly I'm saying, Lord, this isn't right. Lord, I wasn't, yeah, yeah, you know, just grumbling to the Lord. The second song I realized what I was doing. The second song I realized I'm singing about how holy God is and I'm grumbling to him. How messed up is that? You know, and I felt so bad. And so I put my hands down because I have to restart. You know, I put my hands down. I said, Father, I repent of, of murmuring and grumbling against you. Hello, children of Israel, much, you know. I said, I repent of that right now in Jesus' name. And Father, I don't care anymore. I just love you so much. And that's all it took. And when I closed my eyes and when I lifted my hands to heaven suddenly, it was like someone took kerosene and they, they, they just dumped it on my forehead. And it was like someone took a match. <laughs> And I was immediately uh, overwhelmed. It was like uh, just uh, I was wrapped in his presence immediately. I remember starting from my wrists, my hands started to burn. My feet started to burn like fire. And when I went, now I was not baptized in the Holy Ghost, but I was getting baptized at that point. Are you with me? Baptism in the Holy Ghost, he takes your heart and dips you in his presence and power. And when that happened, I went to, I was a shy kid. I couldn't look at people in the eyes. And when I went... To shout out in English, I went, Shandalabakatalabasata, like loud, like I'm shouting it in this church that doesn't even believe in tongues. With the drummer who didn't want the Holy Spirit stuff here. It's drumming, hallelujah, you know, he's seeing it, it's right in front of him now. Amen. The power of God hit me. It changed my life. And I went from a shy kid, I went from like whatever, you know, just standing there. Now I'm jumping and shouting in tongues and now I'm dancing and I'm shouting in tongues and man those two elders jumped on me man they came running from one side to the other side and when they came to grab me the moment they touched me I fell uh oh not that falling down stuff I fell and I went into the pew and I'm laying in the pew and it was like someone took that room and did this and inverted the room and I started rolling into the pew Oh, no. Just when you thought it was safe to go back to church, the return of the holy rollers. I was rolling. No, it was like someone inverted the room. If you've ever rolled, it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like that. And I was rolling, and I'm shaking, and, you know, they made it worse. They should have just left me alone, you know. And they're just standing there like. The worship team, they just hung on the G chord. <laughs> That's all they knew to do, just ring, ring. You know, everyone was ready to go, and now this is happening. You know, is he having a nervous 